Houston, we have a problem. Not too long ago, about six months actually, I talked about this game that was coming into early access. A game that I was hopeful about in so many ways. It had successful playtest and an even more successful launch, but all of a sudden, the game was sort of left stranded in space. Today, we're suiting up and exploring the infinite void as we talk about Boundary. And if you want to see more content from me, be sure to hit that sub button as we are so close to 1000 subs. Okay, let's continue. For those that are unfamiliar, according to the Steam page, Boundary is a multiplayer tactical space-based shooter game. Engaging in fierce team versus team zero gravity firefights and executing low gravity operations on orbiting space installations against other enemy astro operators and other entities. The game released into early access on April 13th of this year and had a massive peak of about 15,000 players on launch. For an any multiplayer game of its caliber, this was great. Before the release, they would do these temporary playtests similar to games like Battlebit Remastered, and those playtests were always filled to the brim with players eager to see what they added or worked on. So many creators across YouTube had nothing but nice things to say about it, such as Blue the Robot, Big Fry, and Level Cap Gaming. Boundary is a particularly interesting take on Zero G Combat because its aesthetics place the game in the not too distant future. Boundary is shaping up to be a very solid shooter. It's pretty easy to learn and it seems like the movement skill and map knowledge will play the biggest role in the general skill curve. From the visual standard to their weapon customization to the sheer like amount of polish in this game, there's a lot to like about this early access release. I'll say this right off the bat before we get into the stuff I don't like if you like what you are seeing on screen pick the game up it's $22 which I think is actually a really good price for what is in this Other game than that this game is extremely fun and it looks absolutely incredible the 3d movement and the zero gravity firefights feel so good and refreshing the guns shoot great and the locations play really well. The smaller details of boundaries such as the graphics and the sound design were the piece de resistance of the entire game. That mixed in with the fact that this was going to be a tactical first person shooter, a lot of us were higher than Senator Sox on the idea that this was even possible. And with so many big names in the space hyping this game up for how unique it was, it seemed like this game would have a solid core audience who would go on to carry this game. Well. That's not exactly what happened. One month after this game was released, things just tanked. In a month's time, 93% of the player base stopped playing this game. On top of that, people damn near just stopped mentioning the game in just about any conversation when it came to games that had been released this year. It's almost like this game just got lost in the void of space itself. Over time, the game has started to lose more and more players with Steam Charts recently showing the game has on average 33 people playing this game daily. Now if you're like me, you're probably asking yourself, what the hell even happened? Well, considering that the launch of this game was about as rocky as two streamers dating, it kind of set the tone for what was to come. Was it the lack of updates? No, in fact the most recent update for this game came out on July 24th that seemed to have things like weapon balancing, controller improvements, and a tiny bit more. At the time though, less than 100 people were playing with a peak of around 250 recorded for the month of July. Well, maybe it was a lack of content at this point. Going back in the Steam News Hub for Boundary, the only thing that I see is that they had a limited time game mode in May called Naval Boarding. What was it? I have no idea. We also see that there was an update on June 29th that released a new gun, map, and game mode. The new gun was the Jug 12 shotgun, which to my understanding from the post, is an automatic shotgun with high damage. If you're wanting something to compare it to, I'm thinking more or less the AA-12 shotgun or the Street Sweeper shotgun. The limited time game mode had a similar rule set to another game mode they featured called Invasion, but with additional respawns and capture times. They also removed jetpacks for a more tactical experience. The new map that they had released was called Dusty, and it looked like a huge goddamn mess. The gameplay I'm showing on screen is that map, and it looks awful. Outside of that, the game just went into maintenance a lot to do small little hot fixes with nothing else going on. I can't speak for the shop because they probably had that on a daily or weekly timer, and I'm not sure what they had available. Knowing them though, it was probably stuff like bundles, skins, and just battle pass stuff, really. 
Well, if it's not the lack of updates and it's not entirely the lack of content, it's gotta be the multiplayer, the only thing going on with this game. Unfortunately, Boundary suffered with quite a few issues, but let's break them down, shall we? The first thing was server pings. When the game was populated, there was a low chance that your ping was going to be bad. Now, it seems like having a good ping is nothing more than a wet dream. Add in the fact that there is such a limited amount of players, finding a game is not only going to be extremely difficult, but also extremely irritating. The second thing to ruin the game was the hackers. If you go on Reddit, the Steam Store page, or hell, or any YouTube video talking about Boundary now, you're going to hear the mention of hackers plaguing this game with the devs sitting on their hands and the anti-cheat doing basically nothing to prevent it. I want to say the drop off hit as hard as it did because of the beginning and now ongoing hacking problem with Boundary. I mean, who the hell wants to spend 25 USD to get shit on by hackers after pissing away your refund window just to find one game? The third thing ultimately would be the game itself, and when I say this, a lot of people might say, well Blackout, this game is so unique, look how different it is, but that's the thing. It's too unique. The way I describe Boundary is that this was more of an attraction than it was an experience. When you see people play this game with its free movement, excellent sound, beautiful looking graphics, you normally get the typical, oh damn, this looks great, it looks fun statement. But when you find out it's $25 or even when you're invited to try it, you then get the, oh, it, it's okay, I mean it looks fun, but it's not really my kind of game response. That's fine if the game doesn't appeal to everyone, but when you're an indie studio and your main goal is to make money and support a project y'all have been busting your ass trying to make, you have to start figuring out how you're going to cater to a wider audience. And once you cater to that wider audience, how do you keep them playing the game? How do you make the people that are already playing encourage their friends to play it? And that's what I think Surgical Scalpel, Skystone, and Hoya failed to realize the most. They got the game out the door into early access, now what? Running limited time modes and releasing one new map would have sufficed, but there were other factors that made other people not really care for it when it came here. When looking at the early access section, it's clear that y'all's hearts were in the right place when the playtests were packed and everything was good, but now, I see this but can't help but shake my head a little bit. When asked the question about how long it will stay in early access, they say, we plan to have Boundary in early access for 6 to 12 months, but this may change due to feedback and suggestions from our community. Y'all, we are about 2 months away from being in that time frame, and the game is sitting in a very, very bad spot. I don't know if they've got an ace up their sleeve, but it's gotta be played sooner than later. Don't do what the devs of World War 3 did and just wait to make the game worth playing. Then there's the question of if the game will be priced differently and the first half of that response is, the price will increase once we reach full release. 4-5 to five months ago, this would have sounded okay, not gonna lie. Now, it sounds like a fucking joke. The only way you're going to gain a player base, and it's the most obvious option at this point, Make the game free to play. But Blackout, what about the hackers? What about them? They're already playing the goddamn game. Sure, it may bring more of them in, but that's for the devs to figure out. <sighs> Let me just breathe. <laughs> for my final thoughts, Boundary was a game that was hyped to the edges of the galaxy, but died out just right outside of Earth's atmosphere. With things like a poor launch, underwhelming updates, and a terrible multiplayer experience plaguing the game, the only thing to do is either make it free or sunset the project. It sounds like an extreme black and white mentality, but I genuinely don't know what else this game can do to recoup its original player base while bringing in new people. I want to see them release an update that brings in more people. I don't want to see them sunset the game, but it's time for the studios involved to dial it the fuck in and figure out what to do. Now I turn the mic to you. Let me know down below what you think about Boundary. Did you enjoy playing the game before its downfall? Could you see this coming from a mile away? Let me know. And while you're down there, go ahead and smash that like button and orbit that sub button. Also, YouTube can show you my content free of charge. This is Sir Blackout signing off to take one giant step for man and one giant leap towards finding a better game. Uh, later.